Okay, so I am going to open the public hearing. Um, easiest way I would have to say, um, if you want to speak, there is a way to raise your hand if you're on. Can we maybe try that? How do you do that? It's down at the, usually it's down at the bottom. Kathy, you did thumbs up. Where did you find it? Reactions. Okay. Yeah, the thumbs up, Carolyn, is in the reactions, which is in the yep. bottom toolbar. The raise yep. hand that you're looking for, if you go to and click on participants in the bottom toolbar, yep. open up a pane on your right, and at the bottom of that pane, there's a button for raise hand. Okay. So now I did see, I believe, Frederick Stucklin raise his hand. Is that correct, Mr. Stucklin? If you would like to speak and please give your name and address for the secretary. Uh, <laughs> Frederick Stucklin, 148 Winkler Road. And uh, yes, I can hear you fine. I can't really hear him. It didn't come through very well then. Uh, Frederick Stucklin, 148 Winkler Road, uh, and I can hear everybody fine. So, Mr. Stucklin, do you have uh, comments that you'd like to share pertaining to the budget proposals as they are at the moment? Not at the moment, but I'd like to listen in and find out where things are going. I have not got a copy of the current budget, so I'll try to get that in the background. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to participate? No public comment? No participation? Carolyn? Yep, go ahead. Um, I'm just gonna, I have a, just a brief thing to share with folks kind of as an update on um, yep. some executive orders that have been issued. Um, so if you would indulge me, I'm just gonna set that up. Absolutely. Okay, so um, can you guys see what's on my screen here? Yes, yep, I, I can. can see it. Okay. Um, so the governor has been issuing executive orders on, on a near daily basis to help the state uh, and municipalities combat the uh, coronavirus epidemic. Uh, and there is a couple of those executive orders and specific sections in those orders that are relevant to the Board of Finance and the budget process. Um, and I just wanna take a second to explain what those are. Um, so on your left is uh, an excerpt from Executive Order 7I, and on your right is an excerpt from Executive Order 7B. Um, and I laid them out in that way because that's the way that they are the most relevant, I think, is to take them in that order. Um, Executive Order 7I requires our municipality and municipalities with the same form of government that we do, uh, it requires that the Board of Finance set the budget for fiscal year 21, which is a departure from uh, how we've done this in the past. And uh, our charter lays out a process by which um, the Board of Finance makes a recommendation to a referendum and the referendum um, votes on the budget proposal. Executive Order 7I changes that. Um, the order specifically requires that budgets be adopted without adhering to any in-person budget adoption requirements as prescribed by our charter, including town meetings, referenda, and special town meetings. It's specific to that. Um, the order also requires that the town adhere to the framework that's established in Executive Order uh, 7B, uh, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, Executive Order 7I speaks to the, to the Board of Selectmen, or which in this case is the legislative body, um, and it's not always, but in this case it is the legislative body, authorizing the budget-making authority to um, pass the budget. The budget-making authority is uh, interpreted by our, our town council to be the Board of Finance. Um, the Board of Selectmen, according to the order, are compelled to pass an authorization for the Board of Finance to adopt the budget. Um, this is what's called a ministerial function. Um, it means, what that means is that it's something that both the Boards of Selectmen and the Board of Finance are going to be required to do 
under the order that's in place, we do not have any choice at all in the matter. Um, it's a ministerial function, it's an administrative function, it's something that we must do in order to be in compliance with what the law is right now. Um, per the established schedule, the Board of Finance is expected to adopt a budget by April 15th. Um, the Board of Selectmen can ex extend that deadline by up to 30 days, but even if we extend the deadline by 30 days, it will not change the parameters established by the governor's order. Um, the Board of Finance this year is going to be setting the municipal budget for the next fiscal year. Um, Executive Order 7I also requires the town right here to um, amended public hearing processes as outlined. I'm sorry, hold on a second. I, it, whoever's unmuted, could you please mute yourself? There we go. Um, so I lost my train of thought here. Uh, the order also requires that the town adhere to specifications that are laid out in Executive Order 7B. Um, Executive Order 7B speaks to the budget making, of, I'm sorry, no, it doesn't. Executive Order 7B um, suspends in-person open meeting requirements as determined by the Freedom of Information Act to the extent necessary to pr protect a public agency uh, or to allow a public agency to meet and take actions, including to meet by video conference, which, which is what we're doing tonight. Um, the order requires that certain conditions continue to be met uh, in order for those suspensions to be in place. Um, the public must be able to view or listen to the proceedings in real time, which by utilizing Zoom and by posting um, the call-in information, we are adhering to that. Um, meetings must be recorded or transcribed, and we need to post meeting minutes within the normal course of business, which um, is also happening. We're, we're prescribed, we're adhering to that. Um, Meeting notices and agendas need to be posted and include information for the public about how to access the meeting uh, meetings as they're happening, which we have done. Uh, materials relevant to the matters on the agenda need to be received 24 hours ahead of time and be available to the public before, during, and after meetings. Um, we have done that as well. Both the Board of Selectmen and Board of Education submitted their budgets to the Board of Finance in, in advance of that. And all speakers need to clearly identify themselves by name and title before speaking on each occasion that they speak. So this is a bit of a departure from where we've been uh, in the past. It is something that we don't have any control over. This is what the, the governor's um, executive orders will require be the process for this year. Um, his orders and state statutes supersede our, our local charters. So. That is what it is. We only have the powers that are granted to us by the state and the state has just determined that this is the process that we will follow for this year. Um, so I just wanna make sure folks have an understanding of um, that process at the outset um, because I, I understand there are people who are having conversations, you know, pr probably privately, but also in social media settings, trying to figure out um, how best to do this process this year. That process has been determined by executive order. Um, so this is what it is going to be. So the Board of Finance has an unenviable task. Um, when I first read this order, I read it to say that the Board of Selectmen uh, would be setting the budget for the, the course of the year. And the thought process at that point in time was to still have the Board of Finance go through their normal process and make a recommendation back to the Board of Selectmen for the Board of Selectmen to adopt so that at least there was some check and balance that remained in place. Um, in light of, of the executive order, putting that authority into the Board of Finance, really the check has already taken place in that the Boards of Selectmen and Education have made a recommendation to the Board of Finance and you guys will now be the arbiters of those proposals and determine whether the, the recommendations are adequate or, or need to be adjusted. So there still is some check and balance in place in that uh, the people who have been elected to perform this function will now be performing that function. It's not the typical process that we all like to use and that we would all be preferred, preferring to use, but it is the process that, that is left to us in this particular cycle. Um, so I'll, I'll shut up and let the public hearing proceed unless anybody has any questions about that. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Can I just remind everybody, if you're not speaking, to please mute so there is no feedback.
Thank you, Jason. <laughs> All right, with that, is there anybody else that would like to speak before we close the public hearing? All right, so I am gonna close the public hearing at 7.12 p.m. Oh. And call to order our Board of Finance Budget Workshop at 7.12 p.m. And I am gonna do attendance just to make sure who we have here. So, Tom Talamini, right? Barb, you're here. I'm here. Okay, Barb. I see her. <laughs> I see you, but I don't hear you. I there we go. Karen. I unmuted. I'm here. Okay. Karen. I'm here. Tom Lansner. I'm here. Hello. Hello Is there there. any Noreen? She might be gone. Oh. Nope. Yeah, Noreen said she would be around, but she had to skip to another meeting too. Okay. All right. Did I miss anybody? All right. So we are all here. All right. So we're going to start with the Board of Education budget. Now we did have their presentation and you also received all of their backup so is there anybody who would like to start with questions or comments? Okay, I have a question. This is Karen. Do I have to tell you that? Yes, you have to say first and last name, Karen, and then go with what you need. Okay, I'm Karen Christensen. Um, I just have a couple of questions. I wanted to know if in any of these numbers, if there's an increase to headcount. I was giving Chris a minute to get okay. up. I think she's here somewhere. Just remember to say your name and your, your title each time you speak. Who would like to speak? This is Geraldine, Board of Finance. Kathy, who's speaking? You or? Right now it's Kathy Simonelli, but um, Chris has really got all the information. So I'm, she's struggling with some technology at her end at the moment. I, I, I can safely say that we have not added any headcount though. So I, I, will, I will cover that one. That's an easy okay. I'm on. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm on now, if it's okay. Thanks, Chris, go for it. Okay, pardon me with the technology issues. I live out in the middle of nowhere, so Wi-Fi is not the best. Um, we are next year, we do have seated in the budget and we have um, middle school sports that's in addition but um, from the end of the year until the beginning of the next fiscal year at this point we don't have any increase in staff i will say from the fy 20 budget until the 21 budget there certainly has been an increase in paraprofessionals but that's based on individual iep need oh, in front of me Karen, did you have any other questions? I know you said you had a couple questions. Yeah, actually I do. Um, there was one thing on page four under the high school, it was line 181, um, 2951, 1022. It said official fees. And I don't know, that looks like a new line, but I don't know what it is. Line what? Uh, line, okay, on your line number, it's, nope. uh, find it. You want officials fees? 
Oh, officials. Oh, I read it wrong. No, I thought I saw officials fee someplace. Hang on. Line one four one. Is that what you're looking at under the high school? One eighty one. Ah, that explains it. Um, that's actually the middle school, and those officials fees are for um, middle school sports. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sure. Karen, was there any other questions? This is Jerry Lynn, Board of Finance. Karen, is there any other questions? About it. Thank you. Anybody else, Board of Finance, any questions with any of the numbers? We're so quiet. So, Christine, this is yes. Jerilyn, Board of Finance. So just because a lot of people cannot see, uh, you know, we had your presentation and everything. Yeah. Um, so what, and because I've got so much stuff in front of me, what was the total percentage increase of your total budget? So I can tell it to you in two different ways, and we've had to figure it in two different ways. So if we take the added appropriation out and don't figure that the added appropriation that you folks put forward that supported athletic supplies a lot of our library um i'm sure you remember that if we put that in as being spent on our budget it's a 6.2 percent increase if we take it away because it wasn't spent on our bottom line budget it's a 6.8 Thanks, Christine. All right, back to my board. <clears throat> this is Bill Sime. I have a question. Okay. It's been discussed back and forth. Um, you have, looks like 2.7 million in here for medical and dental insurance. <laughs> Are we yep. heading to the way that that's gonna be savings or, cause it's $544,000 increase, which is major. Um, um. <laughs> So just so you know, the 544, that's just out of the local. We also have about that same amount coming out of grants um, or other revenue. Right now, the full um, anticipated increase is change that may have to go through collective bargaining process. Um, right now, we have a meeting scheduled on Friday with our one digital town to talk about next steps. Um, but all of our bargaining units have seen a summary of the state plan, which until now, unless um, there's other information that I don't know yet, until now that's been the only other insurance um, vendor that has chosen to give us a quote. All right, I see, yeah, so, okay. Yeah, so for now, I mean, the 2.7 is the realistic number for now, unless you guys change plans is what you're saying. Correct. Okay. okay, and Jason, you're still with us, right? This is Gerilyn, Board of Finance. I'm, it's gonna be very hard to get used to doing that. This is Jason um, Bowser, first selectman. Yes, I'm still here. Okay, and where are we in general with everyone going on the state plan between each side or Board of Ed and town side or? Well, you know, so we, we are kind of in the same boat. Um, we're joint with the Board of Ed for healthcare costs uh, at the moment. And so we have asked one digital, the, the town and BOE's healthcare vendor to, to go out and quote um, alternatives that might be available. The initial quote from Cigna was a 25% increase that came down to an 18% increase that I swear to God, the guy sent us with a smiley face in the email. Um, and then from that point, um, we've had a couple of conversations about um, the Connecticut 
Partnership Prevention 2.0, colloquially known as Healthcare 2.0, and have asked One Digital to also go out onto the market and find out what um, what quotes would be available if we were to, to stick with a conventional HSA, which is what is offered now to most bargaining units. Um, so that meeting is happening on Friday. Um, the contract language in the contracts on my side of the house um, require that we provide um, an HSA or something equivalent or better. Um, I think by most estimations, um, the 2.0 plan would, would satisfy the better um, condition, uh, but we haven't seen what the numbers are yet for many of the other companies that, that might have quoted the town's healthcare business. So um, once we have that meeting Friday afternoon, um, then we can, we can start to have more substantive conversations about what to do. But um, at the risk of speaking for the superintendent, um, I think that we agree that um, the, the quote as presented to us is not acceptable. Um, so, so there's something that needs to be done there in order to, to get back into the realm of uh, reasonable, whether that means 2.0 or that means uh, one of the other bids that, that may have come in kind of remains to be determined. But um, certainly an 18% increase with a smiley face in the email is not something that I was smiling about. Um, so we'll have more information uh, to share with you folks as the budget process moves forward, uh, but we're not there yet. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Thank you, Jason. Go ahead, Bill, sorry. This is Bill Sime, um, Board of Finance. And the financials payroll software, I assume that's the software that to coincide with the new software that the uh, treasurer's office is going for with, so that $46,000, is that so that's part of? This is Christine, Board of Ed. Yes, that's the annual cost for the Munis conversion, the Munis product. And then on, again, I'm just looking at some of the, the ones that caught my eye here. Under electric, you have a $35,000 increase and that, that's a huge percentage of over what was budgeted last year. Is that in line with what you're gonna spend this year or is it just there's something that went nuts there? This is Christine, Board of Ed. I will answer that that is the trend that we're having an increase in electric. Um, but I will ask Andy just to confirm for me. It, yep, he said it's trends. We're trying to have less Board of Ed people talk um, to not confuse the conversation. So it's basically based on trends. I know we've been having conversation about some savings opportunities in that regard, but better to budget based on what we know at this point. Because that's to me that I think that's if I did my calculation right, it's like a twenty one percent increase in electrical charges for next year, which seems relatively large. Christine from Board of Ed, one of the things that we did last year when this came up is we pulled the um, usage month by month across the course of the school year and the buildings, and it's pretty clear that in the month of June. Um, the high school spikes quite a bit and we have building usage and we have air conditioning being used. So we also use that for summer school. So there is some reasonable spike in the summer, but we are monitoring that. But that was the only place we saw a spike was the high school during the month of June. Hey Bill, when you talk, I know you know it's you, but each time you talk, can you say your name and title? Thanks. Yes, I forget. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Just, this is Bill. Someone else can go again. I got to find my other questions. I didn't write them down, but I had them marked, and I can't find where I marked them. Okay. Uh, so this, this is this is Barbara, uh, Board of Finance. I want to just um, piggyback on what Bill was saying. So, if we're seeing trends in June in the electric, didn't we see that same spike the prior year? I mean, I, I, I agree with him. I'm struggling with, with that increase. Just understanding that challenging. In terms of what, the fact that our, our electric usage goes up in June? I just wanna make sure I'm understanding your question. Christine, can you just, Name and yes. where you're from. Sorry. Yes. Christine, <laughs> Board of Ed. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, Barbara, Board of Finance. No, it just it's a it's a big spike, and I would think that historically our increase in June would be the same as the prior June. I mean, it's just it's just a big percentage jump. Oh, Christine, Board of Ed. Um, we certainly are happy to look more into it, but generally we look at a multi-year trend. So if we've seen some increase over the course of a number of years, then we budget up. We are looking to um, spend a little bit more than what's been budgeted for this year. So we take that into account when we look at budgeting for next year. And like I said, we are looking into some um, energy savings opportunities. So hopefully that will be able to have a positive effect going forward. Okay, so uh, Barbara, Board of Finance. So is that, is the increase based on consumption or on rate? Oh, I'm gonna defer that question to Mr. Parkett. Hello, uh, Andy Parkett, uh, Board of Ed, uh, Business Consultant. Uh, it is based on consumption. We did join with the town regarding locking in rates for electricity. Just for comparison purposes, in FY18, uh, total electricity was 190,000 and change. FY19, it was 199,000. So the trends were trending what it was. And in the past, what we've done is try to we'll say be conservative and do our own little internal energy efficiencies of monitoring computers, you know, the whole turning on, making sure things are turned off, et cetera. But ultimately throughout the year, we have had to transfer funds from other funding lines to cover the uh, usage in the electricity. Thanks. The Jerry Lynn Corso Board of Finance. Um, Christine, this is probably more towards you. You were saying that you're looking at energy saving, you know, ideas. Have you guys changed over all your light bulbs yet to the new um, energy saving ones? Have you changed it in all of the buildings? This is Christine, Board of Ed. I'm actually going to ask Andy to respond to that. He works with Roger, our head of maintenance, more so around the um, energy saving. Uh, Andy Pocket, Board of Ed. That is ongoing. I know some have been done. And then uh, we have been in, in contact with other vendors about switching over to those uh, and gaining on the energy efficiency of those. Uh, we had scheduled meetings to have uh, vendors come in to provide quotes for that. Then uh, this all happened. Jerry so Lincoln. it is in the works, it's in the works. Okay, Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Um, well, with the LEDs though, then we seem to be really kind of behind the curve because I know most of the town has changed over theirs and I and I'm looking at the town's electric budget and it seems flat. So I mean, I guess that's something we're really going to have to look into because that, I could see that being a tremendous amount of savings. Uh, Andy Pocket, Board of Ed, uh, totally agree. Uh, my understanding from the conversations we've had, uh, and unfortunately with Roger unavailable, we can get back to you. I believe it also has to do with. Um, ballast work that is needed uh, and I'm definitely I'll admit speaking above my pay grade on that but I remember that being one of the issues but definitely uh, worth we will be looking into that and I've begun and continued to okay Jerry Lynn Corso Board of Finance okay I would have to say that that like should probably be like on the top priority thing because many many people and businesses and companies have changed over to LEDs. We actually, we've done it at my business and saved a tremendous amount. Um, shame on me for assuming you guys had already been there. So I think that really needs to be on the top of the list because this electric just seems out of control. I have to agree. All 
All right, Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Is there anybody else out there? Tom, I see you unmuted. Mr. Talamini, are you looking to speak or did you just yeah, unmute? I, I, yeah, I'm Tom Talamini, uh, Board of Ed or Board of Finance. Um, I think that the energy savings that we found in the stores were tremendous with these companies. It was a big thing and the power company gives you money back. I think that's something that should be looked into real, real quick. Are there any, oh, Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Are there any other question, uh, any other comments, Board of Finance members? Yeah, and that's just me, Bill, uh, again, Board of Finance. Um, again, it, it's in the energy category. Um, you have fuel oil remaining flat from year to year, but again, natural gas usage looks like it's 37% increase over the prior year. Uh, did something switch that we switch a school to natural gas away from something, or is that just another, again, projected increase in, in natural gas for? I'll actually ask Andy to take the um, utility questions so he can speak to that. Christine DeBarge, Andy, Swindler, Board of Ed. Andy Pacchetti, Swindler, Board of Ed. That is another trend uh, issue when you look at the trends, and I'm pulling up to uh, give you that in a second here. Um, Kathy Simonelli, Board of Ed. Sherilyn, I just want to point out that, you know, in addition to um, the savings that you receive down the line, there is a significant outlay of funds that are, are required to get those LEDs in. And that's part of the problem um, for us in moving forward and, and the timing of, of making that changeover. Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Thanks, Kathy. But actually, when we did it, we got such a large rebate from the electric company, it did not cost that much. I guess it really depends on who you reach out to um, to have it done, but we received a huge rebate. So um, I'm assuming Tom Talamini, was that correct with Geisler's too? Or Gotta unmute, Tom. Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, yes, we we had a tremendous savings, and it was a two-year payoff, and we're neutral now. We, we're making money off of it. It doesn't cost us anything. I think it did. I think our bill went up like a thousand dollars in the course of a year or something. It was very minuscule. Kathy Simley, Board of Board of Ed. Well, the initial um, discussions that we had with a vendor was a significant amount of money, over $200,000 that we would have to outlay in order to get this started with no specific guarantees of what we would get back in the same year. So that was what was challenging for us. If I may, uh, Andy Paquette, Board of Ed as well, just to clarify that $200,000 was total uh, much other projects other than the LED. The LED portion of it was approximately about a $40,000 capital outlay of funds that we would have to do in year one. Uh, and so that was one of the reasons that, uh, again, we don't disagree that it's something that needs to be looked at. Uh, it was just the fact of the initial capital outlay. And then there was discussion about whether or not if we had the ability to cherry pick projects, would we still be able to get that, uh, that rebate and with the electric company coming back. This again, based on the one proposal that we had received. Uh, if I can now back to pivot back to the natural gas, uh, that is another trend issue in FY18, we spent 158,000 on natural gas. FY19 uh, was 128,000. I guess this is Bill again. So I guess- I'm Bill, Board of Finance. Uh, yeah, Bill from Board of Finance, sorry. The, um, under natural gas, like I said, so the budget I've shown, uh, that's why maybe my questions are not in line, but the fiscal year 20 budget states that there was $80,000 what was budgeted. So in other, in other words, last year budget money wasn't budgeted to cover that, what the actual expense was, so that you're trying to bring that in line with what the the cost was. So the, the, the form that we're looking at or the budget sheet we're looking at was, you spent more than it was budgeted last year is what you're telling me. 
Uh, Andy Puck at Board of Ed, correct. That's we we try our best as we go through the year to be conservative and uh, ener as energy efficient as possible. And with Roger Baker doing uh, the uh, everything from the, the monitoring that is done uh, when we talk and look at things and uh, this is what in consult consultation with him, we try and get to the point where uh, we we can potentially make this work with the budget that we have and the past two years uh, trending wise it hasn't so again we've had to rob from Peter to pay Paul and this is now you know our attempt at limiting the number of transfers that we have to do and budgeting based on the trends according okay. anything else Bill this is Gerald on Board of Finance uh, this is Bill again from the Board of Finance. So I guess it, maybe it's just not that I'm going to say it's totally misleading, but I guess the uh, I didn't realize, realize I was thinking this budget number was the actual number, but it's not the actual number that was spent. This is what was budgeted last year, so we don't know the actual number. And so some of these increases may be you're just moving money to where you're actually spending, so we're not actually seeing what was spent last year by category, I guess. So. I got a little confused maybe as to, to where, where some of these numbers were coming from. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Um, anybody else right now with a question? Yeah, or this, is, this is Barbara, um, Board of Finance. So just again, kind of piggybacking on what Bill's point is. Um, and, and it is challenging to be looking at budget versus budget as opposed to kind of actualized. But if if we were to be showing these increases as you know a reality because we had to reallocate from another line item, I guess, in order to um, true up where we were, are where are those? credits, if you will, where, where are the line items that were decreased, um, you know, or because we had to take money out of there. I, I don't know if I'm explaining myself well, but um, it just, we're seeing the increases in order to true it up, but we would have had to take that money and allocate it from somewhere else. So where am I seeing the reductions in those other areas? Uh, Andy, and, oh, good. Andy Pocket, Board of Ed. Uh, just a quick uh, background on the budget process. When the administrators with budget authority build their budgets, we provide them with five years of actual expenditures and the five years of budgeted expenditures. That's where we get the analysis done, which Roger has done regarding the trends on it, things like the natural gas and electricity that you're talking about. We change in if those of you that have been on the board of finance in the past remember we used to present you with the eight and a half by 14 size uh document that had the history to show the actual trends we we do have that but we are always getting told that it seemed to be too busy and too cumbersome for people to look at so what we did is fy20 which isn't over yet as we all know um is we compared from budget approved to what it is that we're requesting for FY21. Um, there are transfers at FY19 and FY18 that we do at the end of the year to true everything up uh, for where it is that it comes from. So, uh, and it comes quite honestly from various sources. If we end up having a, say a good year of, uh, you know, other line items as far as say, you know, tuitions or what have you, we would take it from there. If we didn't use our sub, uh, Kelly sub account for our contracted subs, we would take it from there. You know, so those are the areas where uh, we end up just at the end of the year chewing it up. In addition to uh, the past two years, Dr. DeBarge instituting a freeze uh, to deal with our budget issues. Um, Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. I guess, Sandy, this would be a question for you then because like you seem more familiar with it. So with the contract that you were looking for, at for the energy, 
Were there opportunities through the vendors to absorb outlay costs like into the contract and like pay the costs through savings? Any Paga Board of Ed, and uh, what was presented to us, no, there was still initial, the expectation of initial outlay of funds. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Okay, um, so what I would say, yeah, definitely then we have to because there are definite vendors that do it that way. So I think that would be awesome if we can get moving on that and see something, and, so that'd be perfect. Uh, Andy, Andy Puckett, okay. Board of Ed. <laughs> no, that's right. Uh, I we absolutely agree, and we did have we do have two other vendors uh, that when we talked about the first proposal submitted, uh, two other vendors have expressed interest. And as I said, one of them was actually going to come and sit and talk with us and do a walkthrough of the facilities uh, to do exactly what you're talking about a, about a no no cost outlay, no capital outlay of funds to do some of, if not all, the energy efficient projects that uh, they had uh, thought we could do. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Thank you, Andy. Um, anybody else with some questions, comments from the board? Um, Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. I guess, Christine, one of the things I'm gonna ask you maybe to explain a little because it always seems a bone of contention is if you can just work into like your admin, not, I'm sorry, your, um, why am I having a brain? <laughs> My brain is frozen. Um, the top layer, how's that, of the Board of, board of Ed, if you can kind of explain that because it's always said that we are top heavy. So if you can kind of describe the top of the flow chart maybe, and that we, you know, I know you explained it well to us how we aren't top heavy. So if you can maybe give a quick synopsis. Christine DeBarge, Board of Ed, you're talking about in the budget presentation? Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance, yeah. <laughs> Christine, Board of Ed, hold on one second. I have that and I can share it with you. So in our district, we have um, six building level administrators, the principals and the assistant principals. And then at central office, we have myself, the assistant superintendent, who is our special ed director, which is a um, position that we're required to have. And then we have a curriculum director. So over the past couple of years, I had been the curriculum director and the superintendent um, due to a leave of absence and then due to um, the person in the position leaving. And I think we showed pretty clearly that um, work got missed when we didn't have a curriculum director. So that is- How'd it go? Sorry. If you're not speaking, could you please mute? There we go. Okay, found the, I found the slide. So the slide that we shared with you, there were two that we shared with you during the Board of Finance, um, our Board of Ed budget presentation. One was a, basically a bar graph um, comparing the number of teachers, paraprofessionals, and administrators across East Windsor and then four other districts. Um, Two of the districts are also alliance districts. The other two are geographically um, attached to us and are you know, comparable either for the region or for being alliance districts. Um, and the bar graph basically shows the proportion of administrators to teachers to paras. And then we showed a comparison of staff for Windsor Public Schools, Windsor Locks Public Schools compared to us because they were the two closest in terms of enrollment, even though Windsor is significantly higher, it was still closer than any of the others. So Windsor Locks, which is the closest in terms of enrollment and demographics, has one and a half times the enrollment that we do, one and a half times the teachers, one and a half times the paraprofessionals, and 1.3% um, 1.3 times the administrators. So we're very much in line with the proportion of administrators to a district that is close to us 
in terms of enrollment and statistics such as free and reduced lunch, special ed. Um, I can also share Windsor was the other district that is geographically close. It has 2.9 times the enrollment, 2.9 times the teachers, 1.6 times the paras, but 3.2 times the administrators. Um, given all of the mandates that we have that require administrative support, um, I understand it's very easy to talk about the administrative layer, but when we have mandates such as teacher evaluation, we have the bullying law that requires in-depth investigations, we have security issues that need to be investigated um, and a variety of other things. It takes a substantial amount of time and some of that cannot be delegated to someone who's not at the administrative level. So, um, you know, I understand it's easy to sort of pick at that level, but um, there's a substantial amount of work that is required that gets done by them. Uh Barbara from the Board of Finance. Christine, you, you did the comparisons based on the uh, full-time equivalents, if you will. Um, what, how does the, um, the base salaries relate? So are we in line with the total payroll um, versus those other towns? Uh, Christine, Board of Ed, I don't know. I don't have that information in front of me. I can get it for you for the next Board of Finance meeting. Because we're trying to understand the the dollar the dollar amount that's there. So uh, while I, I I really appreciate um, that you've done the analysis for the number of people that we have, it does it it doesn't tell me if we're in line in terms of the 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 basis. If you if you're following what I'm asking, Christine Board of Ed, I do understand. Um, I guess two things. One, the salaries are based on collective bargaining agreements, so that's been in place for a very long time. So obviously any increases historically have all been connected to collective bargaining agreements. And based on information that we have received, um, which I don't have in front of me, so I'm giving you my um, general, is that um, our administrative salaries are actually lower on the scale um, compared to the rest of our DERG. Okay, great, thanks. Barbara, Board of Finance. All right, Jerry Lynn now, Board of Finance. Um, it, anybody else questions from my board at this time? Um, this is Bill again from Board of Finance. Um, just so I can, because where we're at with what's going on in the society right now. Um, I'm a little nervous about the, the, the number we have to put through as a final budget. Um, and uh, I'm just, again, just looking for where things might be able to come from in the, in the end. Um, that Going back to that insurance number, that's a 20, that's going based on a 25% increase you guys looked at or had come in originally? Board of Ed. No, that's a 17% increase, which is the last number I believe we got. Sorry, Jason, I know you said 18, but I thought it was 17. So um, that's adjusted to the, the, the best number you guys have gotten so far. Then. It, yeah, it would be great if it yeah. came down to 17. I would be happy to be wrong on that. Are you still going, Jerry Lynn, Board of Finance? Are you still talking, Bill? Or no, I'm I'm done. Okay. Well, and Jerry Lynn, Board of Finance, I'm gonna 100% agree with you, Bill. I have to be 100% honest, and this is going to be one of the hardest budgets we've ever done. And I'm not going to lie; I am going to find it very difficult to put much of a much of a percentage increase forward with what's going on in society right now with so many people out of work and out of jobs. I, we're going to look at the whole process, um, obviously, and we know what everybody needs, but I'm just not sure where we're going to end up, to be honest with you. 
Anybody else with some comments or questions or? I don't want to miss anybody. It's hard. I can't see everybody. I know it says we have 36 participants and I can only see about 30 of them. So. Uh, Geraldine, it's Christine Board of Ed. Yep. Uh, sorry, when you talked about where, I don't remember if it was you or Bill, I apologize. One of you made reference to where the money would come from. Um, we shared one of the documents that I had forwarded to you folks and is on our website, um, is the opportunities to keep in East Windsor for the public schools. So um, that list, including teachers, custodians, nurses, district athletics at all levels um, that's where the money would come from for board of ed so i think that you folks have that list if you need it again you know please feel free to let me know and i'd be happy to resend it Geraldine corso board of finance thank you christine bill i see you unmuted so i'll let you yeah, go no, I, I actually do do have that here so i uh, i see where you're where you're coming from now I was, I forgot that we had that. Thank you. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. All right, guys. Um, anybody else? And if I'm not seeing you, just unmute and go ahead and announce yourself and, you know, let me know who you are. Because like I said, I cannot see everybody up on my screen. This is Barbara from the Board of is there someone else? Okay, hold on one. Geraldine uh, Corso, Board of Finance. Hold on one second, guys. Um, Brenda, yeah, hold on one um, second, okay? All right, Barbara, Board of Finance, go first, please. Um, Christine, if, if you were to pull out the increase in the insurance, um, because it's very significant, um, what would the percentage um, go to? So I, I think you said we were at a 6.8 um, when, when we started. Um, and obviously the insurance is, is kind of out of your control uh, to a certain degree. So if you, if you were to leave that neutral, uh, and I may be putting you on the spot, you may not have the math, um, what would the increase be? Andy Puckett. Board of Finance, Board of Ed. Oh, whoa, wait a second here. I don't want to be the Board <laughs> board of Finance. You guys have a job that I don't envy. Um, that would be a 4.92% increase. So, uh, uh, Barbara from Board of Finance, that, that's, wow. That, that's Correct. very, very, that's, that's, a, that's a big number. Um, is there anything else that is kind of out out of your scope, um, like the, you know, the, the, without any additional hirings, you've got some contractual, um, you know, collective bargaining agreement increases in salary. Um, what, what, what's the next biggest nut, uh, if you will, that's kind of out of your control? I think that's an Andy question. Um, uh, Christine, uh, East yeah. Board of Ed. Sorry, Andy, I have the no, budget presentation. Um, so what I can share with you is, you know, health insurance, obviously, all the increases in health insurance, um, dental insurance, unemployment, liability, OPEB, all of that um, is an increase of $651,000. And none of that's in our control. So we have a contract with transportation. We have tried to reduce the number of buses that we need, and we can't do that and still get all of our students to school on time. That's $100,000. Um, the, um, sorry, I'm looking at what the, um, our contractual increases are $400,000. We've also had decreases in revenue, um, which are not our, in our control. We certainly do not cut our own grants. We would not be doing that. Um, so there's a number of things that are outside of our control. And I think you folks have a copy of our budget presentation. If you have it handy, it's slide 34. That would outline what you were asking, Barbara, in case you want a quick visual. 
Andy, did I miss anything? Andy Puckett, Board of Ed. Um, no, you didn't. I guess one of the things as far as um, when I took Barbara's question to be um, what are like another thing that's out of our control would be our special education services overall. Um, you know, those are mandated services that regardless of when a student comes in to the district, if there are special education services needed, we're required to provide those. Sherilyn Corso, Board of Finance. Thank you, Andy. Um, Board of Finance members, sorry, I should be specific here. Board of Finance members, is there anybody else with any other questions? Anything else for now? If not, we will move on to capital improvements. Um, I have a couple just questions. It's Amy. Yep, go right ahead, Amy. Amy, um, Amy treasurer. <laughs> oh yeah, Amy O'Toole, treasurer for the town. Um, I have two questions. One is on your employer um, social security contribution of $105,000 increase, which is 19%. That seems like an extraordinary number without new salaries. Uh, Andy Puckett, Board of Ed, that was taken from our payroll service. I mean, as far as the, the Phoenix, you know, calculated based on the raises uh, and the, the, the increases in the salary. Uh, I will double check that, but that was a number that we got from Phoenix. Um, Amy O'Toole, treasurer for the town. The other question is your medical is calculating at 24%. So I'm hoping there's some reduction there that could happen. Because if you do the 527 over the 2.8 million, it is 24% of an increase. Christine, Board of Ed. Sorry, I'm going to have Andy answer that. Uh, my apologies. I have to go back and undo what I did to get the 4.92 to double check that. But I mean, it's straight math, Amy. I'll, I'll take your word for it, but I'll just double check and verify. Okay, Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance again. Um, any Board of Finance members with any other questions, any other comments? And Andy, you said you're gonna check that. So do you wanna just email that to us or? Christine, Board of Ed, I wonder if it would be more, um, a better opportunity to do it after our meeting on Friday with our One Digital folks and we, can get the current renewal rate firm because clearly there are a couple of different numbers that have been sent out to us by email. Um, so it might be better if we sent it to you after our meeting on Friday. And we'll have the latest and greatest. Okay, Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Um, uh, if I may, uh, sorry, Annie Puckett, Board of Ed. I guess I just did it, Amy, and uh, I'm looking at the, uh, hang on a second here. Yeah, I, I guess I'd like to, I mean, I can show Amy my calculation of going from what we have for the all funds budget because we have a funding source coming from grants for funding the uh, health insurance and I got a 2.8 uh, for FY20, and then a uh, 3.26 for FY21, and that be, that's a 16% increase. And then when you go local to local, because of the 544,000 we have coming from other funding sources, that's a 12% increase. Um, this is Amy O'Toole, treasurer. I just did your 527, your increase local only, over the 2.1 price for 
your 20 budget. So I just did the increase for the local only and the budget for 20 for local only. And that's where I got the 24 from. So maybe one calculation was changed and the other wasn't. I didn't do the other one. Indy pay up board of ed. Uh, no, I, I did the uh, two seven, 2.7 minus the two just under 2.2 and then divide it by the 2.2 and it gets, comes out to 12%. And then when you do the all funds, it's 16%. Okay. Yeah, I did. 5.27, um, this is Amy, treasurer for the town. 5.27, 263 divided by the 2.196 is 24%. And think about it, if it's two million bucks, 500,000 is gonna be a quarter of it. So I do think there's something wrong in the calculation. Andy, if I got Board of Ed, I'll, I'll take a look. I mean, I, I'm doing it the two seven minus the two one, divided by the two one and it comes out to 12%. But Andy Pocket Board of Ed, I'll suggest again, along with what Christine said, uh, I will I will verify my math again, but also with the meeting on Friday, this obviously will be revisited. I can also still email my calculations if that's what is the pleasure of uh, Geraldine and the board. Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Yeah, that would be great, Andy, thank you. All right, so we're, uh, Board of Finance members, any other questions? Uh, nothing right now? Okay, um, we'll move on to capital improvements, which is Kathy here? I am here, Kathy Simonelli, CIP Chair. Thanks, Kathy. Oh, Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Um, all right, let's, all right. So any of my members, any questions on capital improvement, the number, the project? Well, any questions for Kathy? I see you coming, Bill. I went. Go yeah, ahead. I, uh, I have just, Bill, I just, I'm board. sorry, Bill, Board of Finance. I have the project list in front of me, but I don't have the budget number because that's on a different spreadsheet. I don't have, I forgot to open that one and I don't want to go looking for it. What was the number in the budget for CIP? AB Treasurer, I think it's 920, but I'll tell you in just a second. Yeah, 920,000 is all the Board of Selectmen put forward. Um, it, they asked for 1.5 million. Um, they asked for 1485310, but the Board of Selectmen put forward 920, which is just shy or just over a 2% increase. Okay. So the, uh, yeah, so the, the blue column on the project list is the, what was put in originally by the CIP committee and the, I guess, yeah, the, and the finance, okay. Thank you, that answers my question for right now. Kathy Simonelli, CIP. I know um, at least some of the Board of Finance members were at the Selectman's workshop when I presented this. I, I don't know because you were all behind me if everyone was. <laughs> So does, is there any question or any clarification you wanted about um, the projects or the process or anything like that? Uh, Jerry, this is, this oh. is uh, again, I'm sorry. The, no, the projects, I mean, I, re I read through the projects, they all make perfect sense. And, and this, I, I, I assume they're ranked in order. I forget that part, they're ranked in order, but how do you guys, um, like one is one, nine is nine, 10 is 10 in order of priority? 
Uh, not necessarily entirely. Um, typically, um, once the uh, final budget comes back to us, we'll um, recommend based on the amount of dollars that we have, we'll, we'll try to, it won't necessarily go from top to bottom. Okay. Uh, the uh, stuff at the very top, the things that are annual, that's um, very much uh, of high priority. Uh, but some of the other things are also high priority. So we kind of try to juggle both in our final recommendation once the budget is set. But if we look at just the annual projects and what was um, recommended for that, that's 1.12 million so we're already a hundred and some odd thousand dollars two hundred thousand dollars below um with the current recommended budget number okay. jerry lynn corso board of finance kathy um just because we do have quite a few participants do you think maybe you could just quickly give like the top annual ones that you guys have in there so maybe people could kind of understand what's in there? Sure, I'd be happy to go through it. So when we talk about the annual projects, we're talking about projects that require funding annually to keep things going. Um, I know it's kind of an oxymoron, seems like if it's an annual thing, it should be in the regular budget, but for lots of reasons that I won't go into all the details now, they are not. Um, <clears throat> the, one of those is the police vehicles. They have to replace their police vehicles fairly frequently because of the amount of time that they're running and on the roads. So annually we budget for two and a half vehicles to be replaced. Um, years ago, they used to try to do three one year, two the next. That often didn't work out very well. So we tried to kind of flatten that curve a little bit and do the two and a half each year and then they can buy two, carry over the other half. When they get the other two and a half the following year, they can get three. Um, those prices have gone up a little bit because the old sedans that they've been driving are no longer made. So they're looking at Ford or Chevy police utility vehicles as replacements. And additionally, because they're changing the type of vehicle, they won't be able to reuse uh, most of the equipment that's in those. So all of that is custom based on the specific vehicle. So they'll have to be replacing all of that as well. And that's gonna add to the cost of those. Uh, chip sealing roads for public works is something that we do annually. We ask for $75,000 so that we can get that same amount reimbursed by the state low SIP program. Uh, the rest of the pavement management, uh, which is the annual maintenance and, and or the reconstruction of roads. We asked for $600,000. Uh, we're still working off an independent pavement study from 2017 that showed that 17% of our roads need base re rehabilitation, 15% need structural improvement, 24% preventative, and 44% didn't need work then. Um, the, basically, the study at that time showed that it, over half of East Windsor's roads, 71 miles of roads, needed some level of work at an estimated cost of about $14 million. So we're clearly at uh, $600,000, not going to get to the top of that needs list. Uh, the next one is for the police department, which is the Next Gen Solutions. Uh, that is their new software system that they have been using. This is the fourth payment of a four-year um, payout. We, they, the vendor kindly installed or delivered and installed the software before we made full payment. So this is a required payment that we need to make this year, a contractual payment to meet the last of our commitments to pay for that software. Um, public works vehicles. Uh, this is the, we put in money each year to cover the replacement of whatever vehicles they might need for public works, be that mowers, loaders, pickups, small, large dump trucks. So I can't specifically say what they will choose to purchase with whatever money they get from CIP. Uh, last purchase was a used GMC small six-wheel dump truck, um, but it, that what they get next will certainly depend on what how many, how much funds they receive and what their priorities are at the time. There's also townwide drainage. That is an ongoing and annual thing. They're constantly battling that as well. They have a number of priority sites that uh, those 
for roads that also need work. They can't do the road work until they get the drainage systems done. So kind of have to put the chicken before the egg here and, uh, and get the drainage taken care of before they can finish that. They figure there are about, for, for reference on what they have to do next, they're, the last ones they did were Wells, Trombley, and Scantic, and that cost was about $175,000. So the 75,000 will begin work on the Wapping, Rocker, Rockville, and Barber Hill and Bridal Path, but probably won't resolve all of those either. Uh, the GIS system, which are used by a number of departments in town, as well as the public can access that. There are mandated, state mandated changes that we need to do um, that are long overdue. Um, the estimate to get the things that are absolutely required, which is locate and map storm drainage systems and map the locations of all street signs. That's estimated to cost about $70,000. So we're looking to put $25,000 towards that and at least get that started. Um, the revaluation for the assessor's office, we put money into that every year. Every five years, we are mandated to do a state reval. So by Again, leveling the curve here, flattening the curve, we're trying to put enough money away each year so that at the end of five years, we have enough to do that mandated revaluation. The last one in the annual list is the vehicle replacement program for town properties. And that covers all department vehicles, including senior center buses. Again, we try to fund in small amounts so that when an opportunity comes up or a grant comes up, we have the required matching funds to be able to take advantage of those. So that is the annual ones. There are obviously others that are not um, covered every year. I don't know if you want me to go through those as well, Geraldine. Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Um, you know what? We, yeah, go ahead, Kath. That way, you know, we want to make sure everybody's familiar with what really needs to get done. So. Okay. Um, so one of the next projects is for the Broadbrook Fire Department. They need bunker gear. Um, this is a mandated replacement for gear that is at the end of its life. The NFPA standards require that the gear be replaced at least every 10 years. 40 felt coats and bunker pants and hoods for 15 personnel. So that's $3,000 for each set. Uh, boots, gloves are another $900 and they'll be covering those from the operating budget. They came and asked us just to do the turnout coats, bunker pants and hoods. So again, this is a total cost of about $135,000. We were looking to put $45,000 in the first year to get uh, the first sets um, changed and then over the course of three years we would re replace all of the sets that that need replacement um, the police need vehicle computers they have old failing laptops in the police vehicles we have purchased some um, this is to purchase i can't remember if this is the other half um, or if this is i think this is the other half i don't suppose we have Bob Leach on here might remember. This is the other half. This is Amy, the treasurer for the town. Thank you, Amy. So this is the other half of the laptops to, re to replace and the other half of the cruisers. These are tablet design, allow them to take them out of the vehicle with them, enter data as they're working and as they're talking to people, it allows them to look things up as they're talking to people, which gives them, um, increased efficiency, better access to information. They can check um, records and, and uh, warrants much quicker. Um, so a good thing for them as well. Um, a failed laptop isn't gonna help them very much. Um, public Works, they need facility equipment. They use this um, for use in the service garage and for the maintenance of the town facilities and town vehicles. Uh, again, we give them some money so that they can continue to build on what they have and uh, we estimated we recommended twenty thousand dollars for them this year um, dog pound repairs still need to fix that dog kennel um, we were looking to pay the entire amount of sixty two thousand dollars which is the estimated amount to replace the kennels both inside and out the inspector's priority is the kennel gates and the inside floor but the entire facility needs a lot of work 
And uh, right now it's grandfathered, but we do need to show the inspector that we are trying to improve the facility and making some progress. The middle school parking lot at, uh, for the Board of Education, that would expand the north parking lot and add 39 spaces. Currently we have people parking on lawns daily. Um, this would uh, add 39 spaces, as I said, and the price estimate was updated in 2019, so it should be fairly, fairly accurate. And that's uh, about $85,500. Also for the schools is a high school S-Wing carpet replacement. That carpet is over 25 years old and it's kind of getting beat. So we estimated about $34,000 towards that um, for an overall project cost of $53,000. Um, so this would be a partial replacement. At Parks and Rec, they are looking to make lots of changes to lots of parks and facilities. There's a number of playgrounds that are in extreme disrepair that they would like to look at fixing, um, things that they can't get parts for anymore, they have to just take down. So um, they had submitted some individual projects as well, but this particular project that we recommended funding for is for a master plan. This would be a firm that would come in and develop a plan that by inventorying all the facilities, determining all the needs, the cost, the feasibility of the improvements, and it would include meeting with the communities and different uh, community groups, including our town sports leagues, to figure out what we want them, what we want our parks to look like as a town. It would they would help us identify potential funding sources, um, assess usage as part of the study. So we as CIP decided that we thought the master plan should come before any additional uh, repairs to any of the current or, or improvements to any of the current parks. We'd like to see the master plan go through first and get a real handle on what it is that we need, what our community wants, um, and how we might be able to accomplish that most efficiently before we move forward with any other um, smaller projects. So the cost for the plan was $33,700. Uh, next one is public works, sidewalks. There's lots of sidewalks that are in need of repair and replacement, as well as new places where sidewalks would be very beneficial. So we provided 30,000 of the 150,000 estimate to begin some work there. Um, and tree maintenance came up during discussion. Uh, there's a lot of trees in various parks and on town properties that need to be taken down due to their age. Um, Every storm brings some down or some limbs down. And uh, we're starting to get to a point where we're risking damage to uh, neighbors' properties or, or properties that we're gonna be responsible for if we don't get some of that tree work done. So that, those are the lists of projects that cover our total budget request of 1.485 million. Um, there were some other projects that we put on a separate list because they are projects that cost more than CIP can possibly budget for. We will never be awarded the kind of money that these projects cost. Uh, there are five of them. One of them is the Broadbrook Fire Department uh, needs a fire truck replaced. This is to replace their 2001 HME pumper truck. Um, the total cost at the time that they first um, submitted this, which was two years ago now, was a million dollars. And we were looking initially last year to give them $100,000 um, as a start for saving the money. Their goal was to try to save enough for the million over a five-year period to be able to replace the truck. Um, the truck has frame problems. It's a double frame that's starting to separate. They have limited places that can work on it. Um, they're also having trouble getting parts. Uh, and they're just kind of band-aiding things to try to keep this truck in service until we can get they can get a new truck, which does take, Amy, you can help me here. I think it was a good year from the time of order to the time of delivery for a fire truck. 18 months. Thank you, 18 months. 18 months. Um, next project is the Broadbrook Gym ceiling. That ceiling um, needs to be abated and replaced. If they, Ceiling tiles continue to um, age and, and are, are falling periodically. 
Um, we need to, once we start to pull that ceiling down, we're going to need to abate all the asbestos on the back side of that. Um, so we have this cost of $250,000 that's estimated should cover the cost of all the abatement as well as the new ceiling. Um, the high school roof needs to be replaced. It's a 20, 20 year old roof. Um, roughly, the age is different on various sections. Uh, this is eligible for state reimbursement. The problem with state reimbursement is you have to pay it up front. You get approved, so you know that the state money will come um, when the project is done, but you do have to pay up front and bond up front. And then as as the project is completed, you get money back from the state as you submit your, uh, your costs. But this is already showing blistering and seam separation and that's gonna become leaks. Uh, we wanted to get this one started because we don't want it to turn into a middle school roof project where it was neglected for so long that the leaks caused problems and decking had to be replaced and, and additional work had to be done increasing the cost of that project. Um, next one is roof, replace, roof replacements. Um, that's at the DPW and at the Broadbrook Fire Department, which doubles as the senior center. That roof also has multiple patches, the chimneys in disrepair. Um, the replacement they're looking at is a standing seam metal roof that they hope will last well beyond its 40 year life estimate. Um, they have, again, lots of problems going on there now and we're risking additional damage if we don't start to move on that. Um, and the last is the high school gym air conditioner. Um, that's needed in for shelter reasons. Um, and this, estimate that they gave us for 154,000 and change is based on rooftop units. They felt they could possibly explore the use of mini splits, which may be more efficient and cost less. Um, but this is a very old estimate and needs to be updated prior to this going to bonding. So these five projects, the CIP recommended as bond projects. The problem with bonding is that because of our 2% budget cap, we don't have enough room in the bonding um, budget, if you will, to be able to, to go out for bond to a, significant, to a sufficient amount that would be worthwhile. It costs money to bond. So if you're not bonding enough money, then you're wasting money um, by going out and to do the paperwork. Um, and we figured 2026 would be the earliest that we could bond. And even at that, I don't believe it was enough to cover all of these projects. And there are also a number of projects. There's another five projects, playground, the play, th three uh, projects that are for playground replacement stuff at different fields and, and, uh, and parks. And uh, the Conservation Commission was looking for open space money. And we are still looking for lighting upgrades um, throughout town. There has been progress, but they're looking for another $150,000 to continue to upgrade exterior lighting to LED lighting and to fix any uh, old and failing um, light fixtures. So the bonding projects totaled 5.7 million. The projects we ignored were 1.4 million. So if you look at everything that was submitted to us this year, it was just shy of $10 million. And we're asking for 1.485, which I understand is probably a big ask given the current situation, but that's, what we, that's why we asked for it. You've, you've heard the story now. <laughs> Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Thank you, Kathy. Um, Amy O'Toole, Treasurer. Um, Gerilyn, I would just tell you, I will put this up on the budget section. Um, I will put the CIP letter with that list of projects so that anybody can go look at it that wants to. Gerilyn Corso, Board of Finance. Thanks, Amy. That would be great. All right. So we have now heard from the Board of Ed. We have heard from Capital Improvements. That is what is on our agenda tonight. Um, before I let Kathy go with capital improvements, are there any Board of Finance members that have any questions at this time? 
We're all good. All right. Oh, Bill, I see you coming towards the unmute. <laughs> this is just, I, uh, I guess, no, I have no, I mean, uh, the explanation is there and uh, it's just a matter of how we can fit what we can fit in the budget for the year. So um, I'm good at this time. Um, Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Before you like mute yourself though, Bill, because before we just go to our upcoming meeting dates, I just want to go around to each of you to give me an idea because none of us have had a chance to talk or, you know, go over what we're thinking. So I just want to reach out to each of you and just see what is your thought process for this budget go around. It's going to be completely different than anything we've ever done because I don't like the fact that the taxpayers cannot weigh in. I fully understand it's law, but I don't have to like it. Um, and I understand it's what we have to do. Um, and you guys have to wrap your head around that too, because right now, um, it's all in our plate. So I'm going to start with you, Bill, cause you're unmuted. So Bill board of finance. Well, <clears throat> I don't know where I truly sit right now. Um, a few weeks ago, I was probably more aggressive than I sit today after things have changed and, um, what's going on in the, in the world and in the country and in the state and in the community. Um, so after I, you know, I, I'm, I'm making notes and I'm, I'm playing with numbers as I go. Um, but I mean, uh, I, I really don't have a true number where I think we need to be right now. Um, seems how this rests totally on our shoulders. Um, which is, you know, um, we really got to think it through because like I said, the voters have no say. So, um you know it rests on us so i i said i can't give a number right now but uh maybe next time i can once i think a little bit more about it so i guess that's where i'm at at this time Geraldine and corso board of finance thanks bill um barbara your picture is next on my screen so <laughs> uh it, it is challenging times and um you know it it, it just floors me with increases in the health insurance like that, that it, it kind of, it, it, it takes the focus away from everything. Um, it, it's, it's scary. Uh, I, I, I agree with Bill. I mean, I, I don't know that I have a quote unquote number in mind. I just feel like where we're starting at is, it, it, it it's not, it's not manageable. Um, and, I, you know, I don't like the position that we end up being forced in because people are presenting things that are thoughtful uh, and 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 needed. But uh, yeah, I um, I'm very I'm very concerned about the numbers that are being put in front of us. Um, you know, we've got this whole one, two, three, and then two percent. And uh, last year was my first experience with that, and uh, it was um it was ugly it, it was ugly so um yeah I, I i think we've got a lot more work ahead of us thanks barbara Geraldine corso board of finance um tom lansner are you still there yes hi this is tom lansner uh this is my first budget go around having been on the board of finance uh maybe three months so um I guess I haven't experienced all the difficulty that the rest of you have. Um, I guess the thoughts in my, my mind, the things I'm struggling with, um, we don't really know the impact of the current situation and what that's going to do to our expenses or um, our citizens' uh, ability to pay. Um, not sure what this uh, Senate tax relief bill is going to do to help all of us but but that's sort of the struggle on one side the other side and and i've tried to learn as much as i can um when i look at the cip for example um there's a lot of things on there that we really need in addition to the annual stuff that we fund all the time so it's hard to year after year uh, ask for people to make recommendations and then have to cut them all out. So I guess I'm sort of reacting to the whole budget process because it's the first time I'm going through it. And I don't know how you, you know, start to have to cut away all these reasonable um, 
recommendations that people have asked for. And I, I sat through all the presentations at the Board of Selectmen and, you know, heard various department heads ask for what seemed like reasonable requests and to have to cut all those out. It just seems uh, heartbreaking. And from a financial point of view, I understand why we need to do it. So I guess I'll leave it at that. But, um, uh, you know, it just, and then we have our responsibility to the town. So I realize we can't um, take this lightly. So I guess those are my comments. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Thanks, Tom. Karen, are you still with us? Karen Christensen, I'm Board here. Of yeah, I'm Karen Christensen, Board of Finance. I think it's worrisome that we're gonna have to balance the needs of the town to the ability of, of the residents. And so it, it worries me a great deal. It's hard because I, I listened to all the budget presentations to the Board of Selectmen also, and they're all very thoughtful and they've all done a good job. And I think in, in good times, we would wanna give them all that they needed. I don't know how I feel right now. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Thanks, Karen. Um, Tom Talamini, are you there? Tom? Trying. I see you. Yeah. You gotta unmute. Tom, there you there go, you go. talk. <laughs> Buttons wouldn't go. Um, I think it's gonna be very difficult. The 4% that the selectmen's came to, I thought was gonna be hard to get to. And I think adding the school budget into this, this is gonna be very difficult. There's gonna be areas that we just can't, it's gonna be hard to cut. Thanks, Tom. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Um, all right, so that is where we sit right now. Um, our upcoming meeting dates are tomorrow. We have a 7 p.m. meeting for tomorrow. Um, it's gonna include the town clerk, registrars, assessor, town planner, historical, selectmen, Treasurer, Board of Finance, and Contingency. That'll be tomorrow. Then our next one after that will be March 31st, then April 2nd, then April 8th. And then we have our normal meeting on April 13th. Um, so right now, that is it for tonight, unless anybody has from the Board of Finance any questions. Jason, are you raising your hand to make a statement? Uh, <clears throat> I'm raising my hand to ask a question and then to, to make a suggestion. But okay. the, from a question perspective, on your agenda tomorrow night, you just listed a bunch of different budgets that you were looking at. Um, who are you specifically looking to hear from? We don't have anybody. This is Amy, the treasurer. Um, our plans from the last time we met last week, um, we ended up having uh, we ended up having um, a discussion on who should be invited when, and the answer was for tomorrow night, Jason. It would just be you and I. Okay. Um, but then on Tuesday, it would be police and fire. And then on Thursday, we would have public works and the community services budgets. Okay. So are, for our three biggest budgets, other than yours and mine, that covers everything. Okay. So this is Jason from the uh, Board of Selectmen. So, so for tomorrow night, it's just Amy and I that are doing the presentations. Um, I got that. That's no problem. Um, I did wanna make just a suggestion to you folks, um, because this is a different process than has been done before. Um, if I think you should strongly consider um, accepting any comment that might be provided um, by the public in writing, right up until the budget is done. Um, we have an obligation under the governor's executive order um, 7B to make sure that we're doing whatever we can to still engage the public in the process and I think continuing, continuing to take written comment would be a good thing to, to be able to demonstrate we're taking that um, directive seriously. Um, I also think, and, and our budget process has been kind of upended a little bit this year because of those executive orders, but um, I think it would be in your interests, whether required or not, to have at least one more public hearing on things before you actually have your, um, your, your deliberations to set the budget or, or to, before you actually have your vote to set the budget. Um, so those, those are just two uh, suggestions I would make for your consideration. Um, this is Amy from the treasurer's office. Would it have to be another public hearing or could we just take public participation 
on our April 8th, which is our last meeting that has really no presentation. It's really just discussion and figuring out what we're doing. So this is Jason from the Board of Selectmen. I think those are probably a, a that's probably a difference without a distinction. Um, I think it would be a, a it would be a stronger demonstration if it was noticed as a public hearing. Um, but uh, again, it's a difference without a distinction. Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Amy, could we just do it like we did tonight for April eighth? Do a public hearing before our workshop? Yes. Okay, so let Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance, let's do that. I will make a note. Now that said, Jason, uh, maybe we can work on an easier way to figure out people speaking than people just unmuting themselves and then like three people are talking at the same time. Sure, I think you, uh, this is Jason from the Board of Selectmen. I think you and I can talk offline and, and come to that um, process pretty easily. I've got a couple ideas already. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Okay, that would be awesome because it, yeah, it gets too hard this way. Um, all right, uh, my I Board just, of Finance, what? I just have one, this is Bill again. I just want yeah. one clarification and I don't know who's gonna give it. So as of our April, regular April 13th meeting, I guess it is, at that night, the Board of Finance will vote on what will be the budget for 2021, is that correct? Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Um, Jason, can you clarify? Sure. Uh, this is Jason from the Board of Selectmen. Um, again, I'm going to point you to Section 13 of Executive Order 7I. Um, and that section says that you guys need to act and approve um, a budget for fiscal year 2021 by April 15th. Um, however, uh, I, I believe it's Executive Order 7B allows the Board of Selectmen to extend that process by up to 30 days if you guys as the budget making authority request us to do so. If that's your intention, I gotta know sooner than later because we only have one meeting scheduled between now and April 15th and that's the April 2nd meeting. Okay, um, that answers, well, oh, sorry, go ahead, Gerald. Nope, Gerald and Corso, Board of Finance. That was something actually, and you know, it was on my list to talk about and thank you for asking Bill because I forgot, I would, prefer to extend it, you guys. I don't know that anything's gonna change between now and then, but I really would prefer to see, I don't know, it just makes me feel better to extend it, even if we have more people who reach out to us in the, that 30 days, either it's via email or it's however they choose to reach out to us. I don't know how you guys are feeling Board of Finance wise. Bill, you're Can on I well, Go ahead, Amy. Try Amy, Amy O'Toole Treasure, um, are we still doing a mailer? Because that will de determine whether we can push that out or not. If you are still trying to print a mailer, we will have problems with that trying to get out by a certain date. Huh, Geraldine Corso Board of Finance. Well, if we did the mailer though, we're showing them what they're voting on. Really? This is Jason from the Board of Selectmen. You could still do the mailer after the fact to show them what was voted on by the budget making authority. Yeah, I guess where I was going with this Bill. was, is, is that, Bill. sorry, Bill, Board of Finance. Where I was going with this is the fact that whatever we put forward, whatever we vote on does not go to referendum. This is whatever we, we have, once we make a decision and vote, that's it. There's no changing it. That is, th this is Jason from the Board of Selectmen, that is correct. Okay. So, like, what we would put together for the first budget referendum, and we would put out there, we may have things in there that we would say, let's see what the townspeople think about, where this year that option is not there. This is Jason from the Board of Selectmen, that is correct. You are the okay. final authority and you got one shot at it. All right, that answers my questions. Jerry Lynn Corso, Board of Finance. Kind of the reason though, I want to go to the Board of Selectmen and ask for that extra 30 days to, then we will make a meeting date where we vote on it and solidify it. And it gives people that added time to somehow in some way reach out to us, whichever individual they choose. I, I have, well, Bill again, Bill Board of Finance. I have no problem doing that. Um, I think, you know, 
that whatever we call by April 13th, we put a budget out there and then, you know, maybe there's that, we'll call it a 30 day waiting period that, you know, we'll, we'll accept written comment or whatever, or they can contact us. I've had people contact me by my town email address for just to ask questions and give opinions. I have no problem with that, but, um, you know, I don't know if it needs to be a full 30 days, but, you know, but I think we need to, I think somehow we have to have people give, give people the opinion, uh, the option to speak. Um, and uh, I think that's fair, but I still think we need to put forth what we believe is going to be the budget by April 13th. Board of Finance members, anybody else? Jerilyn Corso, Board of Finance. Karen Christensen, Board of Finance. I agree. I think it's good to push it out and give people an opportunity to at least have a say. Jerilyn Corso, Board of Finance. Um, so this will be interesting. Does somebody want to make a motion to send to the Board of Selectmen to have them move it out by 30 days? Bill from Board of does it have to be a full 30 days? This is Jason from the Board of Selectmen. The executive order authorizes the um, uh, Board of Selectmen to extend it by up to 30 days. I, will, I guess I'll move that we extend, move to the, uh, send to the Board of Finance, uh, Board of Finance, Board of Selectmen a request to move out to May 8th. For the okay, final motion. budget. Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Motion made by Bill Symes. Is there a second? And please state your name when you do the second, please. Sure. It's uh, Barbara Patano, Board of Finance. I second. Okay. Now I am going to say all in favor, but I am going to pick, choose each of you so that you can say your vote because it's very difficult in this proceeding. So all those in favor, Karen Christensen? Aye. Tom Lantner? Aye. Barbara Patano? Aye. Bill Syme? Yes. Tom Talamini? Tom? You got to push the button again. You're muted again. Unmute, Tom. Now I'm muted. No, you're not. Set. Go uh, ahead yeah, and vote. Aye. Okay. Aye. Motion clearly passes. Thank you very much. Who made the initial motion? Joe, Journal Inquirer. Sorry. The, oh, that was me, Jerry, Bill. Jerry, of course, of Board of Finance. It was Bill Syme. Thank you, Kyle. All right. Um, Okay, so Jerilyn, it's Rebecca, uh, the recording secretary. Can you um, restate that motion so I can get it? Bill, can you restate your motion? I move to that the I move that the uh, board of finance uh, submit to the board of selectmen a request to extend the budget period uh, out to uh, May eighth. Thank you. Thanks, Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay, anybody else before we make a motion to adjourn? All right, Geraldine Corso, Board of Finance. Could I have a motion to adjourn? And when you do so, please say your name. Uh, Bill, Board of Finance, I move that we adjourn the uh, uh, meeting for this evening. Is there a second? Tom Lansner, I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor, Bill Syme? Yes. Mine. Tom Talamini? <laughs> I should have saved you for that. Barbara? Got on mute, Barbara. I thought I did. Oh, yes, Barbara, <laughs> board <laughs> finance, yes. Tom Lansner? Yes. Do we have any lip readers in the audience? I know. Karen Christensen. Yes. Um, and back to you, Tom. Okay. 
you're good. We have enough. Motion clearly passes. We'll see you all tomorrow night. Good. Thank you. Bye. Yes. Bye. Bye. Hey, Deb.